Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Arif Hakim bin Hamad Kusheri. I am one of the senior executives for Neon Bank Berhad. Currently, I have been working here for the past five years. Previously, I worked at KHR for two years as an auditor. Um, I have grown and learned a lot within this company, and I believe that my working experience and accomplishments is beneficial for me and my company to take this company to a whole new level. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi, my name is Muhammad Kara Amam Dan Brahman, and I'm one of the account executive. In particular, I'm the senior executive for Neon Bank Berhad. And for now, I've been working on this company for six years. And previously, I worked as an auditor at Deloitte for two years. I believe that this company help, helps me a lot throughout my career. And then I also believe that I can contribute more uh, on this company so that this company can be a greater and more successful company in the future. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Ilma Hasif bin Rafi'i and I am the junior accountant for Neon Pen Berhad. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. My name is Muhammad Zilmi bin Muhammad Fauzi. I am the account executive of Neon Bank. I am responsible to dealing with client and gather information about the project. Okay, uh, today I want to present to you about our company background. Neon Bank is established at 1990 and one of the largest financial service group in Malaysia and uh, we an established presence in Asian region. Our vision is advancing Asian ambition with you. Our mission is we want to humanize uh, financial service by providing the people with convenient access to financing, having fair term and pricing, advice, advising customer based on the, their needs, and being at the heart of the community. Okay, next, these are the top achievements of 2021. Uh, first, we have launched our first green financing solution for properties. And next, uh, second, uh, we named Outstanding Private in Southeast Asia at the annual Private Banker International Global Web Awards for the third consecutive years. Uh, and the last, we have launched NBBs and B2Bs, a mobile banking solution for SME that also catered for their non-banking needs. Move to next, the management approach. Uh, this uh, management approach that are used uh, by our company from the perspective of factor to consider having a segment reporting. There are three factors. The first factor is the nature of the business activities. Uh, the second, uh, the existence of the manager responsible for the activities and the last one is information present, presented to the board of the directors. Okay, I will explain uh, the type of segment that our, our company is using. Uh, our bank is using operating segment uh, to run our company. It defined as a company, component when the operation if it engage in the business activity for which is its may earn revenues and incurred expenses information on the component of the firm that management utilize to make decision regarding operation activities involving on the classification of an operational segment based on the internal report that are evaluated on the regular basis by the entity main operation decision maker Discrete financial information is available. So let's go over the chief of decision maker and its responsibilities. Now, firstly, what is chief of decision maker? Decision making made by the chief of decision maker is essential, which is their main function is to help allocate the resources of the entity and assess the performance of various segments. It could be the CEO, the CEO, the CFO, the senior management, or even the board of director. Now, who is the chief of decision maker for Neon Bank? 
our chief operating decision maker is Datuk Seri Mustafa bin Aziz. And his responsibilities are make decision about resource allocation and performance assessment of Union Bank to review the management risk and review the effectiveness of the internal control of the company. Third one is to discuss and decide day-to-day -day operating activities. The fourth one is to forecast and plan future of Union Bank. And lastly, to ensure that the strategic plan of the Union Bank's company supports long-term value creation and includes their company strategy. Next, I will show you how to produce a segmental report. Here you can see our segmental report as at 31st December 2021. As you can see, we have five segments, which is community financial service, corporate banking and global markets, investment banking, asset management, and insurance and tackleful. So firstly, we take revenue from external and intersegment. We add them both to get net interest income. Then we add income from operation and other operating income to get the net operating income. After that, we minus overhead expenses, impairment loss, finance costs, and other debts to get the operating profit before taxation. After that, we just minus the taxation to get the profit after taxation, which is 26,084,955. Next, I'll show you how to identify the reportable segment. The operating segments will be reportable if they exceed the quantitative thresholds. There are two threshold tests in determining the reportable segment. The first one is the 10% threshold test and the 75% threshold test. And there are three 10% threshold tests for det detecting reportable segment, which is revenue test, the operating profit test, and the identifiable asset test. The result of the test which will vary if the test is 10% or more of the amount based on the basis used. If it's not 10% or more, it can be included as other segment or can be compared with other segment which is non-reportable segment. Meanwhile, for the 75% threshold test, the external revenue for the reportable segment of the company must at least reach 75% of the entity total revenue. If it does not meet 75% threshold criteria, the company must identify other reportable segments. So this is our 10% of threshold test to determine the operating profit. First, we take the our five segment, which is the community financial service, the corporate banking and global markets, the investment banking, the asset management, and lastly the insurance and takaful. So we take all of their operating profit to a total. We add them all. Then we divide each of the operating profit with the total to determine the 10% test. If it exceeds 10%, then it is a reportable segment. So this is our 75% test. We take the external revenue from reportable segment, which we count just now. Then we divide by the total revenue. Based on our calculation, we get 96.26%. This means that we pass the 75% test. The amount for all reportable segments exceed the 75% threshold test. Therefore, Neon Bank had already ensured that the reportable segment met both criteria, which is the 10% threshold test and the 75% threshold test. Next, I'll show you the conclusion for reporting segment, which is its advantage and its disadvantage. So I'll go over the advantages of segment reporting. There are five advantages of segment reporting. The first one is to improve the understanding of the enterprise's performance. The second one is to help optimizing the use of resources and for a better presentation. The third one is true and fair view. This means that a financial statement is free from a material misstatements and faithfully represents the financial performance and the positioning of an entity. The fourth one is transparency. Transparency. Analysts, potential investors, and other stakeholders need complete information to evaluate the sustainability and growth of a company to monitor the performance of its management. And lastly, it's to better analyzation of risk and returns for the organization. And finally, it is the disadvantages of segment reporting. There are five disadvantages of segment reporting. The first one is investors tend to have misconceptions regarding segment information. The second one is it may incur high costs in providing segment information to the external users. The third one is emphasis on the present, which means that the company Realize so much on the present, so they might have we might have trouble in the future. Uh, the fourth one is data manipulation. 
The fifth one and the last one is it lead to a competitiveness of the company. Now, I would like to present on part B, which is the interim reporting. And our group have chosen Malayan Banking Berhad or Maybank Berhad. So firstly is a preparation of interim report by Maybank Berhad. Maybank Berhad's unaudited condensed interim financial statements have been prepared in accordance with the requirement of Chapter 9 Part K of the Listing Requirements of Bursa Malaysia Securities Berhad, MFRS 134, Interim Financial Reporting and IAS 34, Interim Financial Reporting. There are two methods are being adopted on this interim reporting which is consists of integral method and discrete method. For Maybank Berhad, they adopted discrete method in the interim reporting. Each interim period should be handled as a, as a separate accounting period from the annual cycle and the reports are prepared on a periodic basis. The elements of interim financial statements are meant to predict and explain the financial situation and also the financial performance for the discrete period. And MFRS 134 or interim reporting approve the in income and expense items are measured and recognized on a consistent basis with those used to prepare the annual statements. Next, I would like to move on to the accounting policies used in the preparing interim report for Maybank Berhad. Based on our analysis, we have found two accounting policies that have been used by Maybank Berhad. Firstly, is a property, plan and equipment under MFRS 116. A property plan and equipment is a physical assets cap for use in the production or supply of product or services uh, for rental to others or for administrative purpose and usually are used more than one accounting period or more than one year. MFRS 116 uses two accounting models which is the cost model and the revolution model. Next is leases under MFRS 16. Leases is a contract or a portion of a contract that give the right to use an identified asset over a period of time in exchange for compensation. The right to use is essentially regarded as the leases right to the economic advantages obtained from and the capacity to govern the use of an asset during the East period. Next, I would like to move on to Maybank's accounting policy. The Malayan Bank Berhad's audited annual financial statements for the financial year ended 31st December 2021 were produced in compliance with MFRS or Malaysian Financial Reporting Standards and IFRS or the International Financial Reporting Standards as well as the requirements of Malaysia's Companies Act 2016, except for the adoption of the amendments to MFRS that are effective for annual periods beginning on or after 1 January 2021. Malayan Bank Berhad's significant accounting policies and methods of computation applied is consistent with those adopted in the most recent audited annual financial statements for the financial year ended 31st December 2021 except for adoption of the following amendments to Malaysian Financial Reporting Standards which are effective for annual periods beginning on or after 1 January 2021. The first one is the amendment to MFRS 4, MFRS 7, MFRS 9, MFRS 16 and MFRS 139. The second one is the amendment to MFRS 16, the COVID-19 related rent concessions beyond 30 June 2021. I would like to proceed to the type of interim report. For Maybank Berhad, the type of interim reports prepared by them is quarterly report, where the company prepared their interim reports for every three months. We analyzed the report on the fourth quarter and then on 31st December 2021. The statement includes first the condensed statement, the condensed income statement for group and bank, the condensed statement of comprehensive income for group and bank, 
the condensed consolidated statement of changes in equity for group and bank, the condensed statement of financial position, the condensed statement of cash flow, and last one is the notes to the interim financial report. And this is the related statements that have been prepared by Maybank. That's all from me. I would like to present to our last presenter, Muhammad Ilmam Hasif. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So thank you for Muhammad Farah Aiman for the previous, as the presenter from the previous slide. So I will continue the presentation. So I'll present about the period for the current and the comparative of each statement prepared by the company. So the statement that will be present is statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Statement of financial position, statement of cash flow, fine, statement of changes in equity. So for the current of statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income will be the 1st October 2021 until 31st December 2021 for the current and the for comparative will be 1st October 2020 until 31st December 2020. So both of the current and comparative is recorded by quarter. Meanwhile, for the other date, that is 1st June 2021 until 31st December 2021 for the current. And for the comparative, the 1st June 2020, which is the last year, until 31st December 2020. So both of the current and comparative is recorded semi-annual. Next is statement of financial position. So for the current statement of financial position, will be recorded from the 1st October 2021 until 31st December 2021. It is recorded by quarter, meanwhile for the comparative, it will be recorded from the 1st January 2020 until 31st December 2020. It will be recorded preceding immediate year. So for the statement of cash flow, it will be recorded from 1st October 2021 until 31st December 2021 for the current and for comparative, it will be recorded 1st October 2020 until 31st December 2020. So both of the current and comparative will be recorded by quarter. Finally, statement of changes in equity. It will be recorded from the 1st October 2021 until 31st December 2021. Meanwhile, for the comparative, it will be recorded for the, for the previous year, that is 1st October 2020 until 31st December 2020. So both of the current and comparative date. It is recorded by quarter. So uh, we also made a few adjustments for depreciation of property, plant and equipment. So on the 1st October 2021, Maybank acquired plant and machinery at a cost of 2,129,989. The legal fees of 70,000 is not yet recorded. Plant and machinery are being depreciated on the straight line basis of 10% per annum on monthly basis. So we made that a few adjustments. So for the cost, 2,129,989. Will be plus with a legal fees of seventy thousand. So we'll get the initial cost of two million one hundred and ninety nine nine hundred and eighty nine. Meanwhile, we we'll, we will minus the depreciation that is two million one hundred and twenty nine nine hundred and eighty nine times with ten percent of on monthly basis, which is six over twelve months, and we will get. 109,999. So for the carry amount as at 31st December 2021, we will get the uh, carry amount that is 2,089,990. Next, for the net adjustment, we also made a few adjustments on cash and shop 
Sales Fund. So during the current year ended 2021, the total cash and short term funds amounted to 41,483,926. So as at 31st December 2021, Maybank estimated that the amount would only be 10% uncollectible by year end. So the gross amount that is 41 million, 483,926. So we were times by uncollectible rate that is 10%. And we'll get the amount of uncollectible amount that is 4,148,000. I'm sorry, 4,148,393. So the net amount to be reported will be 30, 37,335,533. So finally, it is the flight, it is the extract of financial position of Maybank Berhad. So this is the statement of financial position extract for the year ended 31st December 2021. So for the non-current asset, the property plan and equipment before adjustment the amount would be 2,129,989. Meanwhile, after we made a few adjustments, the final amount would be 2,089,990. So for the current asset that is cash and short term fund, before adjustment, we make uh, the amount would be 41 million. 483,926. Meanwhile, after we made a few adjustments, the final amount would be 37,000, 37,335,533. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time and thank you.